Welcome to this Legal Aid New South Wales Law webinar on Let's Talk Scams. My name is Kerry Wright and I work in the Community Legal Education Branch at Legal Aid New South Wales. I'm here today with Finn Hipkin from Legal Aid New South Wales and Lydia Armour from the Department of Customer Service. Hi Finn, hi Lydia. Hi Kerry, thank you for hi, having Kerry. us. <laughs> so to begin we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land. We would also like to pay respect to the elders of this land, both past and present, and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people attending today or watching the recording. So the purpose of today's webinar is to talk about scams and who can help if you, a friend or a family member has been affected by scams. We do have a handout on, um, the, on your control panel, so you feel free to download that handout. Um, to have as a resource, but you'll also receive an email after the webinar with links to the resources that we talk about today. What I'm going to do is um, launch a poll with you to start. So we just want to, and you can use your device to answer this question. Our poll question coming up is, have you ever been approached by a scammer online or on the telephone? So as I say, you can use your device to vote yes or no. So I'm just waiting for people to um, have a go at um, voting in our poll question. <clears throat> Looks like we've got about 80 people with us on GoToWebinar and we've probably got quite a few people also on Facebook Live. So I think most people have voted there, so I'll close that poll and share the results. How about that, Lydia and Finn? 98% yes, they have been approached by a scammer online or on the telephone. So here we go. Obviously, this is a very good topic to be looking at. So we'll come back to our, our main screen. So Finn and Lydia, do you want to tell us our audience about your roles in your organisations? Do you want to start, Finn? Thanks, Kerry. Um, so I'm a solicitor at uh, Legal Aid New South Wales and, and I work in the consumer law team. Um, so we help people with um, various consumer law issues, whether it be credit and debt, insurance, um, mortgage hardship, and, uh, and, and consumer issues. Um, I'm very happy to be here today and uh, I'm really happy to see so many people logging in. And I want to know who the 2% of those attendees were who haven't been approached by scams, because I certainly <laughs> have. <laughs> and what and strategies you... do you have to share? <laughs> <laughs> and Lydia, how about you? What, Hi, what's your role? Um, thank you very much for having me. My name is Lydia Arma. Um, I am from Better Regulation Division as part of the Department of Customer Service. Better Regulation Division is um, an entity that has been formed recently, um, part of um, Fair Trading, um, Safe Work and Licking Gaming, um, just to name a few. Um, my role is a project officer in the new initiative that we have created called Community Voice Network. So, so thrilled to be here and love to share some insight and information that we can learn with each other about scams. Okay, thank you, Lydia and Finn. So, this is our first key message with scams target everyone. And obviously from our audience, that's pretty um, topical for them with most of them having experienced a scammer. So we're going to start looking at some scam watch statistics. So do you want to take us through those, Lydia? Yes, so it's quite, um, just to give you a bit of a, a background comparisons to set some numbers. So it, last year, as you can see, um, more than one, sorry, last year of 2020, more than $175 million were lost as a result of scam. Uh, in New South Wales alone, we've lost 46 million, which is quite a big number. But to our surprise, this year with Corona, with people being at home and different interaction that we have online, as of today, the statistics show us that we have lost as a nation over $248 million. So that's quite a huge jump. And we haven't finished the year yet. December, is, we, will hit its peak, we will hit the peak of people falling into victims of scam, which we can go through um, throughout the session. New South Wales is now the winner 
of coming uh, in the winning race, which is we don't want to be part of. Um, New South Wales so far have lost over $85 million. So as you can see, this is a huge number in comparison to last year. And I just wanted to also point out to our audience as well that these are just the numbers that we are aware of. Um, so the whole point of this week's scam awareness is to share with you that, you know, talk about your family and friends and it's okay. You don't have to be ashamed. If we don't know, we can't make any change in from, from a, you know, holistic approach. So please do let us know, please report it and we can walk through those steps throughout our seminar. So there's just some big numbers for you to focus on. Um, it has jumped quite a lot as a result of our, you know, the situation that we are facing. Yes, and as you say, December's probably a big month because everyone will be online shopping as well for Christmas. Correct, correct. Okay, so our next slide coming up is just to point out that there are so many scams. So you can see on this to gain your personal information, there are fake charities seeking donations, there are unexpected money scams, uh, dating and romance scams, threats and extortion scams, unexpected winnings, buying or selling scams and jobs and employment scams. So um, Finn, you want to tell us about a few of these scams that you've dealt with lately? I will, and, and I'd, I'd encourage everyone to have a look at um, ACCC's Scam Watch website because it's a really, um, uh, a, a really good breakdown of all the different types of scams that that are out there, um, and it can be it can be useful to, to educate yourself about the kind of thing to expect. Um, as Kerry said, um, I I wanted to go through a, a couple of um, I suppose you'd call them horror stories uh, of, of clients that um, I've given legal advice to who have. Who have been the victim of um, of some of these scams. Um, the 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 unexpected money inheritance and, and, and rebate scams that's circled in the um, bottom left corner of the screen is is a really common one. Um, I was giving some advice to a um, to a woman about a completely separate legal issue to do with I think it was insurance or, or, or credit or something like that. And at the very end of our conversation, she said to me, um, "Look." Uh, Ultimately, I'll be okay because um, I've, I've just received a letter from a, a long lost relative in the United States um, saying that uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm entitled to a, a, a sum of money from a, a, another relative in the States who, who passed away. So I asked a few um, follow up questions um, and, and this particular client had, had transferred already, I think, 30 or $35,000 to, um, to this person. And it just ticked all the boxes and, and put up all the red flags for a for a scam. Um, so um, you know we were able to give the client some advice about what they can, what she could do in the situation. But by that point, um, you know the money was gone, and, and, and it was quite a sad situation for her. Um, the other the other really common one that that we see, um, and I think this might be the scam where more money is lost um, than any other, is the buying or selling. Um, scams where, where victims are essentially contacted through um, social media or, or, or other um, uh, or, or by phone um, about a sort of amazing investment opportunities, big payouts, quick money, guaranteed returns. Um, so I've spoken to clients who have um, thinking that they're investing in, in, in some sort of um, sort of fund, have transferred money to scammers only to find that the scammers sort of disappear um, without a trace. So, so I think you know, the, the key point is to be alert to the warning signs. Um, of the various types of scams so you don't get caught out. And we'll be talking a little bit about this um, later on in the presentation. Okay, yeah. thanks, Finn. Um, all right, so our next slide is, say, is, is about encouraging you all to keep up to date with scams. So Scam Watch has a big focus on consumer awareness and education. As Lydia mentioned, it's Scams Awareness Week. And when it comes to scams, prevention is better than cure. And, and I think we'll be repeating that message throughout today's webinar as well. And if people are educated about scams and aware of them, they're less likely to fall for them. So you can subscribe to Scam Watch Radar 
alerts, um, which you might know about these already, but it's the ScanWatch email alert system where you can sign and receive monthly updates. And there's also a, the ACCC, which um, Finn just mentioned as well. Uh, they have a, what's called the Little Black Book of Scams. It's, it's an online resource now. It used to be printed. And in fact, your local library might have a printed version but uh, it's short and easy to read. And the other wonderful thing about this resource, it's available in 10 languages. So it's an online resource and there'll be a link in the email that follows this webinar. So just some ideas on how you can stay up to date with about scams, particularly the latest ones, because they also, if you go onto the Scamwatch website, they regularly put up news and alerts about the latest ones that they're seeing. And I think what we're doing here, Kerry, is a good start, isn't it? Talking, um, talking about scams, sharing our different stories. So we're constantly bringing up the the forefront of the scam and making sure people don't forget about it. You know, people always said, "Oh yeah, I've heard about the inheritance scam," but the more we talk about it, it might link on to other family and relatives that um, you know don't really want to put you know a bit ashamed of reporting it or talked about it. So I think what we're doing here, you know, is fantastic. That's right, and there's no shame in being scammed because they're they're always finding new ways to um, to get to us. So our next slide is our next key message, which is if it seems too good to be true, it is. It's an old saying, but it is um, a good one to remember. So we're just going to have a quick look at some scams. You know, there's so many of them. We're just going to focus on a few uh, current ones. So the first one is COVID-19 related scams. So Lydia, you're going to talk to us about these scams. So this one um, obviously is relating to the situation that we have been facing for the last couple of years. And unfortunately, um, with every unfortunate or misfortune, the scammers tend to take advantage of our community. Um, so far, Scamwatch has received um, over 6,400 um, scam reports um, in terms of um, corona related scam. And you'd be surprised that we've lost um, close to 9 million, over 9 million we've lost in terms of, um, you know, COVID related scam. What does that look like? What does that look like in practice is there's two ways. So people could be asking for your personal identity, which is a huge thing. Um, once you lose your personal identity, um, Finn can, can assist you down the track of our seminar that it is quite a big piece of information that you want to hold close and dear to your, to your heart. Um, but they could try to get your information so they can try to take all away, uh, take your personal ID um, away and then impersonate and use your name for to borrow loans and, and do all sorts down the track. Or the sad part is there's some scam that include the vaccination. So the issue with the vaccination at the moment, they'll send you some kind of a text to say, please click here. You've been upgraded to prioritize list of the vaccination or please click here. And then you, you, you know, be able to join a, a different kind of list. But we don't want to click any unknown, um, unknown link. Um, if you didn't contact them, I would just not react. That would be my, my message. Or there have been instances where fair trading have been informed that people have, I suppose, trying to take advantage of the situation. They would say to you, if you pay us $50, $100, we could prioritise your vaccination, which is not the case because vaccination is free and it's available for everybody. Um, so that's, that's what it could look like. Or they could pretend to be from the government. They might say, you are at risk, please sign up immediately. So that's, you know, like, that's two things to be aware of. Um, asking you for money, which is um, not the case, um, or pretend to be the government person to try and get you to give you personal information such as date of birth, Medicare, um, or your driver license. So this is a key, key warning area that, you know, you, you don't click onto anything that you didn't sign up to or if you're not aware of. And then throughout our session, we'll give you some strategies on how to avoid falling into the victims of scam. And like on this slide, uh, Lydia, it's unlikely that a bank or a government agency would even send someone a text or an email asking for those details. Yes, yes. And if you're not sure, stop. So stop everything and then, you know, we'll go through the different strategies, as I had mentioned, um, and then we can work through, you know, what, what can you do when you receive those messages. Okay, thanks. So Finn, you're going to talk to us about this coming up, missed calls or voice message scams. 
Yeah, and, and if I was doing this presentation in person, I'd, I'd, I'd usually get um, participants to put their hand up to indicate whether they've been um, the, the target of this scam. And, and I can guarantee that um, most people would have, I, I certainly have. Um, so um, we know that the, the most frequent way scammers approach people is through uh, telephone calls or, or, or text messages. Um, and from around sort of August 2021, We've had a lot of people getting getting scammed text messages about um, about missed calls or voicemails. Um, you can tell that these are scams as the text messages often contain spelling errors or, or links to unknown websites. So you can see the example on on screen now. That, that, that's quite commonly how it looks. Um, if you if you spend more than five seconds looking at the um, looking at what's in front of you, you can see that there's a you know, the, the, the spelling errors, and that's a that's a, a sort of first warning sign. They sometimes begin with um, a sort of series of lowercase letters or numbers, um, and then they say you have a missed call or voicemail, um, and and there's a there's a link there. Um, now, if you if you click on the link, you're you're asked to to download um, a, a fake app, um, and and look, I'll, I'll just j jump to the next um, slide, okay, please, yeah. Harry, because th these particular scams have have become known as um, flu bot scams. Um, and 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 as I said, they essentially work by um, by scammers sending a text um, claiming that you have a voicemail, um, sometimes a parcel to track, uh, which is really difficult at the moment because a lot of the time people people do have parcels to track, so it might seem genuine. Um, and and more recently, we've been seeing um, flu bot text messages um, that tell people that they've got um, photos to view um, and, and to click on a particular link um, to to view photos. Um, don't click on the link, um, but if you do, if you were to click on the link, you're then invited to um, to download and install software. Um, and and once installed, um, it, 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 your your device or your phone can can actually be infected with what we call malware um, that can that can read the contents of your phone and and track passwords and, and other personal details that you enter into um, you know, a, a banking app or, or something like that. Um, and it gets worse. Sometimes your contacts are then sent um, these same text messages and they'll receive a similar scam down the line. Um, now, the, um, the, the ACCC scam watch um, uh, people so, sometimes use what they call the three Ds. Um, don't click the links, don't download and, and delete. Um, which I quite, which I quite like. Um, if um, if you do accidentally download these these programs, um, you should sort of act straight away um, by not entering any passwords um, or logging into the online your online banking, cleaning your device, changing passwords, contacting your financial institution to make sure that um, these scammers can't get any of your personal information. Um, and and look, I. I suppose that the, the point of this webinar is not necessarily to scare people, but just to um, make people aware of, um, of the kinds of scams we're seeing. Um, and, 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 and as we've spoken about before, just trying to avoid engaging in the first place, um, because once, it, you know, once people lose money or transfer money, um, it can be difficult to recover. Yes. OK. Thanks, Finn. And um, yeah, so this resource on our slide is on the um, Scamwatch website. So if you want to find out a bit more about the current flu bots, um, then that's a good place to go because they're kind of keeping up to date with them. Uh, someone's asked a question. Are there phone apps that may be downloaded to clean out malware, etc., from flu bots? Does anyone know the answer to that? I, think I don't know the answer. Resetting, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know the answer. I mean, we'd sometimes, if, if people have, um, have downloaded the, um, the the malware, then we would encourage people to get in contact with a um, sort of technology professional to um, to give advice about those kinds of things. And we'll be talking about an organisation later on that can help um, with sort of ID theft and, and things like that. Um, mm. And then the, the other thing I, that I'd say is, that, and the, the DHL one is one that I've received a few times. And obviously during lockdown, everyone's ordering things online. So you might think that um, it's a it's a genuine um, text message. Um, I think that the, the the best thing to do is to is to go back to the to a sort of trusted source. So if you've ordered a, a product from 
Amazon, for example, then go back to the original email that you received in confirmation um, and, and track your parcel that, that way rather than just automatically clicking on, um, on the text message. Um, but then, of course, sometimes the text message is from Amazon, um, so it's, it's really <laughs> difficult to know. Um, so I think that the, the message is to sort of exercise caution and to speak to others if you're not sure. And possibly just wait and be excited when it arrives. Yeah, that's the other Don't thing worry again. about tracking <laughs> it. We're all so desperate to, <laughs> to know everything <laughs> these days. Okay, so Lydia, you're going to take us through this slide that's coming up, how to, what to don't do and do do um, to protect yourself. So that's a good segue um, to, to lead me um, with that point, Finn. So as if you've received any um, link or text or voice mail that you're not aware of, I know we live in a, in a, in a time where we're rushing to get everything done. Um, my advice would be just take a breather. Don't react, don't click on anything that you're not aware of um, and don't respond to any pop up as, as Carrie said, you know, like, just don't track it. Just just wait for the excitement for the parcel to arrive. But that's easier said than done because I do get a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> I do that myself. I put my hands up. I do that myself. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so to slow down and read the message, you know, read it again. Have a look at the at the link that Finn, that Finn had um, point out. The spelling uh, the spelling mistake. Um, the the often the link would have no relation. For example, it would have. X, Y, Z, DHL, um, rather than just a straight up DHL. So just to just, just slow down, ask yourself a question. Am I expecting something? Um, did I actually order um, the parcel? Did I actually buy the lottery ticket that they said that I've won? Um, so just slow, slow down and put the power back into your own hand. So if you're not sure, I wouldn't be following the instruction on the text. If I'm not sure, I would look up the company directly. So for example, I would look, look up the postal services company. I would look up the courier's number and then I would be, I am in charge then, the power is in my hand. I would then look up the telephone number, the website, and I would um, contact the company myself just to confirm if you have sent me something or if this information is correct about my vaccination. Um, so I would always, I'd rather have the power in my hand and that's that's what we're encouraging all our consumers out there to do, just to slow down, do your research um, and don't don't click to anything. And if you're not sure, give a shout. If in doubt, give a shout. There's, there's a lot of help available out there. Someone's asked the question, uh, Lydia, about uh, that they understood that if a link started with HTTPS uh, colon, that it was okay. Not Did necessarily. We yeah, we so so in in the beginning of time, I suppose, um, you know, before or, <laughs> or the scammers have caught up to all of these. On the actual website, so if you are to visit a website, there used to be a little tool, um, so on, on the address bar, if you can see the green tick with the padlock, um, often we'll say, okay, that's reliable, but now the scammers obviously have kept up with all the technology, there are different ways now, so I still, it, it will give me a bit of certainty that it kind of safe but I wouldn't feel um, absolutely, it wouldn't be 100% proof. I would then look up the company myself to make sure that the power is back in my hand. I've, I've done everything that I could to protect my personal information. Excellent, thank you. Hmm. All right, so avoiding scams. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at avoiding scams, focusing on three issues, protecting your identity and personal details, doing your own research like Lydia just spoke about, and getting help and reporting scammers. So we're going to start um, with protecting your identity and personal details. So Finn, what can someone do if they give a scammer their bank details? Yeah, and, and that's the, the most common way that um, scammers access people's money is, is through, um, through online banking. Um, now, where people have, have sort of inadvertently provided their bank details to, to scammers, then the first thing to do is to call the bank immediately and, and to, to tell the bank and to, um, to ask the bank to put any, any further transactions on hold. You can lock credit cards and debit cards. Um, that's a, a first step for stopping um, any money coming out or, or any more money coming out. Um, where money has come out, it, it gets immediately more difficult. Um, you, you can sometimes request um, what's known as a, a chargeback, but a chargeback is generally in place for where you 
purchased um, goods or services that haven't been provided and, and, and things like that. Um, it doesn't necessarily cover people where they've transferred money to a, um, a fake lawyer in, in America. Um, you may not get your money your money back. Um, I mean, sometimes banks are obliged to, to refund um, and you can speak to a solicitor about um, the circumstances where banks might be liable for, for loss, but those circumstances are quite few. Um, so it, it's best to, to sort of stop the scam from happening in the first place if you've given your uh, if you've given the scammer bank details um, sort of act immediately to, to make sure that your bank's notified um, report it to scam watch um, though again that's not going to actually help um, get your money back so the the, you know, the the first thing to do is to is to contact the bank contact your bank and financial institutions and um, and, and go through the process there mm. Um, someone's asked a question, Finn and Lydia, I don't know if we know this, they're wondering how many scammers actually get prosecuted? Is that something we know? I don't know the answer to that um, entirely, but, but uh, uh, two things that I'd say, the first is that quite often um, scammers aren't, um, aren't based in Australia, um, so even even if they can be identified, there's jurisdictional issues for um, you know for, for police actually prosecuting, um, mm. and uh, and and yeah. Look, the, the second thing is that in, in many cases, even even if a, a scanner is um, uh, you know found and charged by the police, even then there's no there's no guarantee that um, that the, the victim is going to get their money back. Um, mm. I haven't really answered the question, but um, it's no, interesting. No, no, that's Perhaps fine. We can, uh, we can get back to that particular person on the <laughs> yes. stats. Um, but we've also got on this slide, Lydia, reporting to New South Wales Fair Trading. How can they help? Yes, so um, just to extension on Finn's answer, um, I suppose we, we don't know, we don't have the figure of how many has actually been prosecuted, but what we can share with the scam statistic on the Scam Watch website is there's quite um, a large number of people that have reported the number of scam. Um, so as of this year, it's 253,843,000. Um, um, of cases, which is a lot. And we do want to hear more because as I said, you know, those statistics help us to shape, um, you know, the way the scammers work, you know, keeping us up to date with the new and upcoming scam that they are constantly reinventing. Um, so even though we don't know how many people actually got prosecuted, um, we can tell that, you know, we, we need more numbers because obviously, you know, in comparison to how much, um, how much money we've lost, um, not enough people are reporting or, or sharing this information. So I would encourage everyone to um, report the information to Scam Watch. Um, so, but to, in terms of um, how fair trading can help, um, Finn has touched on quite quickly when it comes to the consumer law. Um, we could, help you if a business had taken your money and you've not received a product or service that's that's something that we can help and trying to recover get some kind of a redress through the jurisdiction of new south wales fair trading the tricky part is um if the scammers are you know overseas um, we can try and approach them but when it comes to jurisdiction we can't exactly try and go hunting and looking for someone that we don't even know, you know, anything about them except the IP address. So prevention is better than cure. So you can come to New South Wales Fair Trading and you can contact us um, with the contact details of 13, 32, 30. Um, but that's pretty much the limitation to what is happening within New South Wales and perhaps an extension of, um, you know, a business within an you know, a legitimate business in Australia. So just to be mindful that um, you can come to us and, you know, we welcome the information, um, but to try to get money back, especially huge amount of money that you have direct deposit into someone else's account, it's going to be quite tricky, isn't it, Finn? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think the, the other point to make is that there's a, there's a difference between a scam and um, the poor provision of a, of a service. Um, you know, scammers are, are quite often just trying to get your money. There's, there's no service involved at all. Um, so there's a distinction to be made there um, and, and whether the law can help and, and whether fair trading can help will often depend on, um, on that distinction. Yes, absolutely. If it's if it's a, a as I said, if it's a business, um, you know, you've got even if they have an ABN number, you really can't say that they are a legitimate business. Yeah. But if there's a, a, a clear direct relationship between buying goods and services, 
be something that we can we can explore and look into a case by case scenario. And someone's asked the question, um, Finn, if they give someone their bank details to pay them back some money, you know how we might do that if we buy a present for a friend and everyone yeah. contributes. Can you get scammed if you do that? I'm, I'm reticent to say no, um, just because of the very creative ways that, that, um, that scammers uh, operate. Um, <laughs> my, my understanding is that, um, is that those, um, it, that information is, is is different from your you know online banking password and and, um, and credit card number. That's just a way that people can um, transfer money to a to a particular account. Um, I, I haven't I haven't come across um, scams that, that that people um sort of do just just with those just with those details. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and we've had our first Facebook question. Why is the bank the first place to report a scam, not the legal avenues? Are they too slow to stop mm -hmm. further damage? That's probably a, a fairly accurate assessment, actually. Um, the, the reason the bank's the first place to go is because they're, they're obviously the ones that can control who's able to access your money and not. Um, so if, if, if a scammer already has your online banking details, for example, You've got to call the bank straight away and, and, and put the account on hold so no further money can um, can come out. Um, the the law can um, can sometimes uh, be be helpful after money's um, been been taken by a by a scammer. Um, but the the reality is is that it's difficult to take legal action against um, a, a person who's scammed you because quite often you don't know who that person is. Um, more often. The law can get involved, um, or, or there's legal options available for people where um, the bank may have done the wrong thing. Um, so, if the bank was aware, for example, that um, a person was getting scammed but continued to allow money to come out of that account, that might, in some cases, give rise to a, um, a, a legal dispute. Um, not always. Um, so, so that it, it's it's a practical answer, really. Um, the, you know, the the bank is is in charge of. Or the bank can control who who can and can't access an account, um, whereas the, the the law is probably the next place to go. Okay, all right. Well, we'll move on to our next um, topic, which is do your own research. So, Tim, oh, sorry, Kim gets a text message asking her to click on the link provided to track her DHL package because she's super keen to know when that's going to arrive. Um, so. Do your own research. Is that you, Lydia, that's going to talk to us? What should Kim, should Kim do? We have, yeah, so pretty much we have touched on the, on this um, on this particular strategy. Um, but definitely, um, if you were to receive, uh, you know, a, a package was coming, um, I would ask myself, who did I order it from? Um, if it is, uh, if even if I have ordered anything at all, sometimes you just get a, bit, a little bit excited and you can't keep up. Um, but do my own research. I cannot stress enough that put the power back onto you as a consumer. Um, you know, as, as a as a as general public, put the power back into you. Um, if you're not sure, don't click the link. If you're not sure about, um, you know, who it was coming from, because sometimes um, a company could use a subcontractor to do their delivery, so it might not come through um, Australia Post. It come, it could come from various couriers company available um, in New South Wales. Um, so it can be genuine, but how are you going to find that if you don't stop and think before you click on the link? Um, and if if you have accidentally clicked onto the link, um, and if you become aware that oh, I've got done here, um, definitely report it to Scamwatch. Um, I cannot stress enough. It is such a, as a national database that I cannot encourage everyone to, to take a visit on the website, scamwatch.gov.au and make sure that, you know, don't be ashamed. All of us have been done. I, I, I have, I work for Fair Trading um, and I have been, you know, scammed. So it's, it's quite common for us to, to make mistake and that's, and that's okay. Mm. And uh, Lydia, a question from Facebook. How do we know which online stores on Facebook or Instagram we can purchase from? Is there a way to know whether they're legitimate or not? Again, um, you can. Um, so again, back to our own very point, you can do your own research. There's a few way and when it comes to um, the e-platform, online platform, you could check their ABN number, which is an Australian business number. Again, just a tool to say that they are a registered uh, business. Um, you can check ASIC website, 
again, is another tool to show that they are making some kind of um, uh, to, to follow the right guideline of conducting a business. Review. I cannot stress about looking up onto a general review. Review can be fake, but if you if you do your own research and have a good read of how many people have made a genuine review about a product, um, that, that that is another tool. Another one I wanted to point to is so from New South Wales Fair Trading website, we have a um, a register where we keep the most um, complaints um, database. Um, so it's a database where you can log on and see which kind of um, company or which kind of services we receive the most complaint about in each particular month. So that could also be another tool. It doesn't guarantee that they are, um, you know, it's just another tool. So we have different tools available for you as a consumer to put the power back into your hand, but nothing beats a good old research. Take a bit of time before you, provide your banking details. And another another one good tips that I would always go to is make sure you don't share your, your personal um, banking details. So you can pay via another platform, you know, such as eBay, they have their own protection. PayPal have their own protection. Some credit card have their own protection. Um, so obviously, you know, you need to look into what is the best method. Mm. That was very timely, Lydia, because I just had a question. If we order and use PayPal, is it safe? And then you just answered that question. So well done. Um, yeah. Someone was also asking about unwanted phone calls. Is there a way to stop them other than ignoring them? <laughs> um, there is um, there is a service which I'm not sure if we um, if the the community um, aware of. There is a, a it's called Do Not Call Register. So Do Not Call Register. Traditionally, you have to constantly updating your details. Um, recently, they have um, updated their new IT system where once you are registered on the do not call register list, you don't have to renew every year. So that is one of the tool. Again, um, there's limitation of um, which company or which charity can contact you. Um, so I would encourage people to hop onto do not call website, do not call register website, and you can actually check the status of your number whether you are already on the list or not on the list. But yeah. I wouldn't be sharing. You know, that's what it comes down to. Do I really need when you fill in the questions on the on the on the internet, do you really need to be giving out your phone number? Mm. Because that's how it works, isn't it? Once one data source company have your information, by ticking an agreeing button, you're also saying that, you know, there might be a down the track where they can sell your information to another marketing company. So keep in and mind. We've got another question here. Organisations call and ask personal details to confirm. How can I identify if the call is genuine? What do you think, Lydia? Yeah, yeah Finn? Oh, that, I, I mean, as, as, a, as a practical suggestion, I, I know the feeling that that happens quite a lot. And, and sometimes it's a, it's, a genuine, um, it's a genuine phone call. Other times it's not. Um, as a practical um, suggestion I'll, I'll sometimes say something like look i, I i'm not um i just want to be sure that this is a genuine call um ask where they're calling from so if they say i'm calling from ing um hang up the phone and then call ing on a, on a number that you know is is a, is a genuine one um, it can be time consuming um but better safe than sorry yeah exactly agree, agree. all right when I'm going to get help, how can the law help me? So what if my identity details have been stolen, Finn? What can people do? Yeah, we, I mean, we sometimes um, speak to people who, who think their identity has been stolen and, and you might suspect that this has happened if, for example, um, you receive unusual bills, if there's charges in your bank statements that you don't recognise, um, if you get calls about product, products or services you never asked for, that might mean that someone has accessed um, your personal details and is um, uh, doing, you know, applying for credit cards in your name or, um, or buying products in your name or, or whatever it may be. Um, again, um, before the, um, the legal options are entertained, you should contact your bank and, or financial institution straight away so they can block the account. Um, get a list of all the transactions that you've um, or that have been entered into in the particular um, particular accounts. Um, We'd also also encourage people to speak to the, the police about about this particular issue. Um, obviously, with um, you know, if, if someone owes you 
money um, and you know who that person is, lawyers can give you advice about how to get that money back, whether it be going to the local court um, or sending a letter of demand or whatever it might be. If there's a scammer involved, um, often in, a, in another country, um, it, the, going to the local court in New South Wales is going to prove um, is going to prove futile. Um, the law can get involved in um, advising people about making complaints against banks. Um, so if, if, a, if a bank or, or lending institution has, has made a decision that you disagree with in relation to, um, to a scam or, or a transaction, then you can make an internal uh, complaint to the bank. And then in some cases, you can go to an external dispute resolution scheme. Um, AFCA, the Australian Financial Complaints Authority is the, is the main one. Um, but it's very rare that, um, that a scam is going to be covered by um, uh, the, the legislation that stops banks from, um, from doing certain things. So, um, you know, while the, while the law can get involved and we can give people advice about their options, um, it, 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 it may be limited. Um, now, the next slide I, I think is, um, is an organisation that, um, that might be able to offer some more sort of practical help. Um, it's called ID Care. And if you've had your identity stolen, um, you can contact them for free assistance. Um, they're what's called a national identity and cyber support service, and they help thousands of, of people in, in both Australia and New Zealand, um, both individuals and organisations, reduce the harm that they experience from, from the compromise and misuse of their identity. Um, and, and they provide um, what they call a sort of response and, and, and mitigation service. Um, it's free and, and they, they can actually provide a tailored response plan, um, in some cases a case manager to help with, with practical solutions to issues that arise after someone's identity is stolen. Um, so I, I suppose the short answer to the, the question is that there's a few organisations you get in touch with if you suspect that this is, this is taking place. The police, your financial institutions, in some cases legal aid, um, and then um, consider ID care as well. Um, and, I'm, and I'm sure we'll be able to share the, the, the details of that organisation if, if, if people would like to. Okay, thank you. All right, so as we've mentioned, this slide coming up, it's just to remind you, it's Scams Awareness Week, and that's why we're talking about scams. So Scam Watch has asked us to stress these points um, that it's important to talk to everyone you know about scams. So the T is to talk to everyone about scams that about or know about or have experienced. A is to ask the question, have you ever been scammed or what's your top tip to avoid scams? So have those conversations with your friends and family members. L is to listen and learn from each other and create safe spaces to talk about scams. Have your weekly scams catch up with your friends to find out who got what and what they did. And K is to keep talking. Awareness is your best defence against scams, which I think we've, um, we've already stressed. Uh, so someone's uh, asked a question. I'm not sure which of you, Finn or Lydia, can help with this is, um, it seems that often when you go onto websites, people ask you to accept that they use cookies. Um, is that an avenue for scamming and what happens if I refuse? I don't know. I, oh, I can't hear you, Lydia. Oh, have you accidentally muted? Are you back? I am back. Apologies. Oh, um, yeah, that's all right. a perfect example. Um, IT is definitely out of my league. So when it comes to cookies and what that means or what it does, I might have to to pass over to to, to somebody else. IT is definitely not, not my strength. Have you no, any I'll to take, no I'm, I'll have to take that question on notice as well. Mm. Yeah, so um, perhaps give someone else a call to talk about cookies. Um, I know that the Be Connected um, website has a lot of resources or the eSafety Commissioner probably has yeah. a frequently asked questions. If you have a look at the um, eSafety Commission uh, website, then you can probably ask those sort of questions and get an answer about cookies. Okay. Your provider, sorry, Kerry, um, your internet provider might, might also be able to give you some guidance. Yeah, true. That's right. So, um, all right, reporting scammers and getting help. So, I think, you, have you talked about this already? How, Finn, how can a lawyer help if someone does get... Yeah, I've, I've touched on this a, um, a couple of times already. 
um, I think the key message is that the, the, the most effective way to avoid scams is by um, thinking about some of the preventative and pre preventative measures that we've talked about. Um, because after someone's been scammed, there's often very little that can be done to get the person's money back. Not saying that there's nothing that can be done. Um, and we always encourage people who have been victim of a scam um, on top of speaking with the police and, and speaking with banks um, to come and get legal advice about their options. Because as I said before, in some circumstances, if the bank has done something wrong, um, there's a there's a code called the e-payments code that sometimes you can um, can suggest that the bank has, has breached in allowing money to be transferred to a scammer. Um, but the protections are limited to the consumer once the money's come out of their bank account. Um, a lawyer can um, uh, can help people understand their options um, and give some practical um, hints and tips as to um, as to what to do if, if they've been scammed or think that they're um, they're being scammed. Um, but but I think it has to be seen in conjunction with the other things we've suggested: um, the preventative measures, speaking with your bank and or financial institution, and, and and speaking with the police, particularly around identity. Thanks, Finn. So, Lydia, someone's asked a Facebook question. Can fair trading help with puppy scams? Absolutely, if they are in New South Wales. <laughs> if they're in New South Wales. If they're in New South okay. Wales. Um, I suppose it comes to, that's what it comes back to, you know, it comes back to the jurisdiction. Um, and it's got to go back in, along the line of, did you pay for something that you did not receive? So, if they have misrepresented a puppy in a particular way, um, then you know it, it's a clear cut of you paid for something you did not receive, so we can assist with that. But if they're saying that you know there's a special breed of puppy that's coming from, you know, overseas, um, and you've you know sent a huge amount of money, um, again it goes back to where does you know how how can we track them down? It's it's going to be a little bit tricky. Um, so do your research who who you are dealing with online. That's just so important. We've just phoned a friend, it looks like. Someone's explained to me what cookies are in plain English. So I'll share this with you all. Cookies are a bit like getting a ticket for a coat check. You hand over your coat to the cloak desk. In this case, a pocket of data is linked to you on, um, on the website server when you connect. This data can be your personal account, your shopping cart, or even just pages you visited. You get a ticket to identify the pages you've, um, to identify you as the coat owner. The cookie for the website's given to you and stored in your web browser. It's a unique ID, especially for you. If you leave and return, you can get the coat with your ticket and your browser gives the website your cookie. It reads the unique ID in the cookie to assemble your activity data and recall your visit just as you left it. So there you go. Um, but anyway, that's, good. that's a that's good a, explanation that's, that's of cookies. <laughs> uh, so, but definitely have a look at the eSafety Commissioner website and their, their details are in the email following the webinar, which you can find out a little bit more about cookies. So Lydia, do you want to take us through this slide coming up as to who else can I report to? Absolutely. Um, so we talked a lot about banking um, because obviously, you know, we want to make sure that your information, you know, your valuable asset is protected. So if it's to do anything to do with banking, um, please contact your banking institution. Um, there is also an external um, level um, if your bank can't resolve it or if the bank has done the wrong by you. There's AFCA that Finn had mentioned. Um, when it comes to a government agency, um, probably linking to the corona, um, corona virus um, scam, um, Centrelink, Medicare, um, any government related um, services Australia, um, they actually have a scam section and identity theft um, particular team, because obviously a lot of people are trying to get your, in, your personal information. And if you're not, sh not sure if you're aware, you only need 100 points to confirm who you are. Medicare is one that's often used, driver license, uh, residential address and utility bills. So if you have 100 points, you could essentially go and open a, Met, a Centrelink account. Um, Cybercrime, you can contact cyber.gov.au. Um, so anything to do with online interaction, that's not, um, uh, you know, that's, that, that's an online platform. Um, 
ASIC, um, financial investment scam. They are they do have scam section as well. Um, fraud and theft. We have also mentioned. Um, speak to your um, local police. Um, speak to a lawyer. Contact legal aid. Um, there's, there's you know there's always some um, someone who is prepared to help. Or if they can't give you the final resolution, they can give you a, a referral services. Um, Image-based um, abuse, cyberbullying, there's Office of the E-Safety Commissioner, um, spam as well. This is, um, I, I like this one because it's probably um, ACMA, Australian Communication and Media Authority. ACMA have probably not been mentioned in our presentation before, but if you have select that you don't want to be part of a particular marketing uh, newsletter and if you actually unsubscribe and they still continue to contact you, you can actually report them to ACM, ACMA. Same as if you have a do not knock sticker on your door and a particular com a company continue to approach you um, unsolicited goods and services, you can actually report them as well. Again, I'm saying with an asterisk, terms, conditions apply because only um, some organisation and charity organisation can approach you. And lastly, of course, um, every end of financial year, the tax related scam will come out. It'll be something along the line of you have um, lodged your tax return or we have previewed your information. Please click here to confirm. And if that is the case, um, there is a, a scam um, unit um, within the ATO. So as you can see, different um, cohorts have different um, scam related assistance. So there is no reason at all for you to feel like that you are alone because, because you're not. Exactly. And those big departments are now setting up their own internal um, uh, teams to help people who are being scammed. So the, a lot of those details will be in the email that follows the webinar, but you can also just look them up by Googling say ATO scams and it'll take you to their page. Uh, so someone's mentioned here the scam where someone might copy a credit card you're carrying while passing you in the street. Is that called skimming or something? I'm not sure but does, does that happen very often Lydia? I know you had those little things we used to put our to put your credit cards in to give away yes. when we used to do, do stalls <laughs> pre-COVID. Yeah, you, you can you can also purchase them. I believe that is called an IRF. Um, it's it's an anti-skim card, so you can buy them. Um, you know, you see them at the airport. You can buy them at um, at the supermarket or at the pharmacy. Um, so what it is is called card skimming. Card skimming can occur where people have this um, device that they can just uh, walk past you and skim your credit card details, and they can use those um, you know information to purchase you know for for their own use. Credit card skimming doesn't occur just by walking past. It can also occur um, from the ATM machine when you go and take your money yeah. out. So my tips would be um, before you put in your credit card um, insert to make sure that you just um, give the actual insert section, give it a good shake. If it's a bit loose, if it looks like it's been tampered with, don't put your card in there. Yeah, so that's another useful tool just to have a check. You know, you, you can feel that it has been tampered with, and card skimming we've not um, we've not heard um, in the last couple of years because obviously you know there are other flavor of the month that has been going through with the scammers, but it's still out there. Yeah. Hmm. Have you seen carry, that? Pin? Yeah. Yeah, and 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 the other, you know, it, it can be difficult to avoid some of these these scams, um, which is why the, the the practical suggestions of you know checking your transaction history frequently to see if there's any unexpected amounts that are coming out can be a good idea as well. Um, and then speaking with the bank straight away if um, if you notice anything. Mm. And and if you do go to a restaurant, when you do join, um, you know, the, the rest of the, how are we moving forward with the new with the new stage of the lockdown? And when you do, don't, don't lose your, don't let people walk away with your credit card. If you want to pay, mm -hmm. um, make sure, yeah, don't let people go, okay, I'm going to take your credit card and, and walk away because, I mean, you don't really know who's who. So you want to be you want to be safe. Yeah. And even with your tap and go, um, just take a moment, don't just tap. Read the number on what on the display on the screen. Make sure it is the correct amount and it's not a mistake that they've made or, you know, they're trying yeah. to do something that's not, you know, acceptable. So just before you tap, always take a look on the screen. 
That can be hard, Lydia, though, with those new Apple ones because they're just a little white box and you're trusting the person. They'll have to show you their screen. Yeah, or if you do the Apple uh, Apple wallet, it will often ding. So you get a ping straight away of yeah. how much you've just paid. So that could mm. be your reconfirmation. So if you tap, it will ping on your Apple Pay how much you've you know, yeah. charged. And, and these kinds of issues as well, if there's a mistake, so if you go somewhere and you get charged $500 instead of $50, then um, that's I suppose that's not strictly speaking a, a scam. Um, and, and that might be where the, the kind of mechanisms that the bank has in place to um, to remediate those um, those issues can can come into play, um, mm -hmm. but it's always difficult. I mean, I check my transaction history, and and you see things on there, and, and get into a panic because you, you think it's something that you haven't purchased, and then and then you realise that oh yeah, actually I did buy that pack of chewing gum. <laughs> yeah, but because the entity, the entity of what the yeah. business registered might not be the name of the shop that you went into. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. just the um the information I was talking to, the actual name of it, it's called the um RFID um card protector. RFID. Kind of RFID. Um it's no. some kind of technology that protects your card from from you know being getting your information skimmed. Often you see that as well for for your the protection of your passport, the past you know the mm -hmm. new version passport with the chip, work in the same way. So RFID um, card skimming. Thank you. All right. Well, we're just going to launch a few polls. We're getting close to the end of our webinar, probably only about another ten minutes. So we'll just do these few polls with our audience and see if um, people have been listening to our key messages. So I'm launching the first one now, which is talking about scams helps everyone. Is that a true or a false? So we'll see if our audience, you can use your device to vote um, on our poll. So hopefully people uh, are going to participate in our poll few people are joining us um, and voting so I will because we've got a few of them I'll probably close this because I'll share it with you 100% of people have said true so that's great because that's one of our key messages from today's webinar so um, yes talking about scams does help everyone our next one is coming up. New South Wales, fair trading can help if you are scammed by business operating in New South Wales. True or false? And if anyone's got any final questions, you can type them now and I'll ask those of Finn and Lydia uh, once we've done these few polls. So people are voting on this one and I will close that and share the results again 100 percent people said true so that's good Lydia people got that message from you that if it's a New South Wales business they can um, they can talk to New South Wales trading and we'll, we'll share the phone number for that in a minute uh, what's our next one so here we go the next one is you can get legal advice if you're a victim of fraud. True or false? So we'll just let people vote on um, that one. I'm not sure, Finn, did we talk much about fraud? Um, I guess there's all sorts of fraud. They can be yeah. a victim of fraud. So I'll close it, that. Yeah. And 100% of people have said true. Do you want to just mention um, fraud? People could come to you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, look, I think um, fraud and scams kind of overlap. Um, but uh, you know, if, if in doubt, you can always come and get some um, some legal advice from from solicitors at Legal Aid, um, and we mm. can talk about your options depending on the, the sort of unique circumstances of your matter. Okay, so this is my second last poll, which is if it's too good to be true, it probably is. And I originally said it is, and someone corrected me. Um, it probably is. <laughs> One of our um, people who asked a question said it probably is. So people are voting on this one. Um, we've got a bit of a mixed response on the trues and falses from our audience. So we'll just give people some uh, some time to to vote and I'll 
close that one off. We haven't had any more questions from Facebook, but um, it's good you could answer the ones that they did. That did well. So we've got 91% true and 9% false. Some people very positive outlook on life. <laughs> We're all getting a bit cynical, I think, about if it's too good to be true, it probably is. 91% agreed. Yeah, and it might go with, you know, I guess an additional protection. If in doubt, give a shout. So, you know, you could be, you could be, um, you could be really, you know, focusing on a positive, but if in doubt, give a shout. Don't just click. That's right. And this is our last poll, which I'm just going to launch there um, for everyone to vote in. So scams can involve celebrities to trick you into believing them. Is that true or false? Uh, just waiting for people to vote on this final poll and um, giving you some time to type in your final questions. So. I will close this off in a couple of seconds. Yep, most people have voted and share the results. 95% agree that that's true, that celebrities can be um, used and 5% said false. So I'm going to hide this um, poll and bring up this next slide. Hopefully it will come up to our, oops have to go back to my screen. Um, here we go. There you go. So Finn, tell us about this celebrity scam. <laughs> well, I mean, firstly, whether Maggie Beer qualifies as a celebrity or not, I'm not entirely sure. It's <laughs> a bit that. mean. She <laughs> is well known, but I do love Maggie Beer. Um, yeah, that's so, right. so she was recently caught up in a, um, a CBD or cannabis gummies scam where people were um, falsely circulating online that, um, that, that Maggie Beer um, endorsed um, the, the, the name and image um, or, or, or endorsed this particular product to lure consumers to, to give their details to scammers and then um, consumers would purchase these these goods thinking that Maggie Beer had endorsed them, um, which of course she, she um, hadn't and, and I think she actually had to issue a, a public video um, noting that she hadn't uh, endorsed these CBD cannabis gummies. Um, it may seem obvious to some, she's probably more of a quince paste um, kind of person <laughs> than, um, than the gummies, but, but there you go. So, so celebrities can, um, can be involved in scams. Um, yeah. <laughs> bit, bit Definitely. That was, a, that was one to draw your attention to that one. Okay, so the slide coming up now is get free legal help. So Law Access New South Wales is your best place to get free legal help, 1300 888 529, and they'll do a triage with you and find out who is the best person for you to speak to, or they might just refer you on to the right website or a phone number. I'll bring up some of those phone numbers now. So these are um, some of the contact numbers to be aware of. Lydia's spoken about the New South Wales Fair Trading number, 133220, or have a look at their website. As Lydia mentioned, they keep a register of companies that get the most complaints, good ones to avoid if you want to have a look at that. Uh, Scamwatch, someone asked, how do you report to Scamwatch? Well, there's the number, 1300 795 995. But I think, Lydia, is there a um, an online uh, is, form as uh, well? Yep, so the website is scamwatch.gov.au. It's quite straightforward you be taken to uh, the main page and there is just a one click where you can actually hit report a scam. So you can report for yourself or on behalf of someone else. But right. we need that information. So please, please, you know, bring it in. We need we need all the information we can get so that we can shape the future of how we can, you know, prevent the different scams. Yes, because someone asked the question, should I report every phone scam that I get? What do you think? Some of them turn up every second day. Um, but yeah, I think it's good. It's good for them to know who's getting what and what they look like. They may, I'm not sure what the form requires, whether they ask you to put up a screenshot or something or just give the details. So maybe, yeah, put that, put that website on your, um, in your saved 
browsers and yeah and get on there whenever you see a scam yeah so i'm just having a quick look now it's just a quick five-step process so um, pretty much agreeing to you know what information to provide tell them about the scam tell them about you um, put in any supporting evidence and then click complete so mm, if you do have so the time um, we would appreciate it if you report it Great. New South Wales Police, their um, number 131444 ID care that Finn spoke about, 1800 595 160. If you think that your identity uh, has been stolen and you need help to manage that. The eSafety Commissioner that we spoke about, um, their website has some fantastic resources, uh, www.esafety.gov.au. And I think they manage the Be Connected program, which uh, run all sorts of webinars on lots of topics, including a scams one, which uh, and they record them. So you can probably find the Be Connected webinar um, recordings there as well and the do not call register that Lydia spoke about um, which you can go to www.donotcall.gov.au to check if your number is on there and um, and register your number all your numbers so that's just some phone numbers and web addresses and that brings us to the end of our webinar so I'll just have a look um, Okay, so how to spot and avoid credit card skimmers? Well, I don't know, how would you do that, Lydia? You gave an example of, of the ATM machine and, um, and being careful with your credit card if you're paying for things, actually go to the machine and make the, the payment yourself. Mm, I think just be mindful, just be mindful who you sharing your information with, um, whether it be online, but if it's going to happen, if, if they're just going to walk past you, I think it's going to be quite hard to predict of who's walking around with the skimming machine. Um, but in terms of <laughs> what we have the power of, in terms of, you know, being a being an informed consumer, I would definitely just be mindful of what details you put on the internet, whether it's a reputable website um, and don't, you know, don't let anyone walk off with your credit card, check the ATM machine, as I've mentioned before. So those are just, uh, you know, different strategies that we can implement into everyday, everyday use. Hmm. Finn, there's a question here from Facebook. If someone uses your photo on a fake social media account and takes money from others, how can you protect against loss of credibility? Hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a difficult one. Um, I suppose you'd have to demonstrate um, that you've uh, that you've suffered a loss. Um, look, like like all of these these examples, um, we they, they often turn on the specific facts. Um, so if people have sort of specific um, scenarios that they want to discuss for for legal advice, um, we'd encourage people to book in and, and speak to a solicitor at Legal Aid, um, and 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 they can book a phone appointment and speak to someone um, and and discuss the um, the ins and outs of that particular matter. Mm, exactly. And here's an interesting one. Can sophisticated flying devices, drones, capture credit card details? That's, um, <laughs> it's, get, it's getting hard to say no. <laughs> It's hard to imagine. Um, have to mine's, quite close. <laughs> yeah, they would catch you out. Um, all right. So it's good. Uh, Okay, would be really handy if Scamwatch had an app. I'm not sure what Scamwatch's mm. plans are in terms of an app, but uh, certainly the website's there. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably all the questions that we have so far. So I guess it's time to say thank you very much to you, Finn and Lydia, um, for your presentations today. It's been a great conversation talking about scams and um, getting those key messages out to our audience. And just a reminder to everyone that there'll be a survey after the webinar, and we really appreciate your feedback and an email that'll follow one hour after the webinar with links to the web pages and resources that we've talked about today. And that's also going to be posted on the Legal Aid New South Wales Facebook page. And if you're watching this as a recording, you do have the, um, you've got any questions, you can um, send 
those to CLE at legalaid.newsouthwales.gov.au and we'll um, get in touch. And remember Law Access New South Wales number 1300 888 529 as where you can get free legal help and referral to the best service to, to meet your needs. Um, we're getting lots of um, thanks. Someone's asked the question, can people scam your debit card like a credit card? What do you think, Lydia? I would say yes, because there, um, there's also, with the debit card, um, there's a limit of how much you, you actually have to put your PIN in. So um, if you provide um, your, your debit card details, they still have access to your banking system, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And even with the tap and go, I think, I believe it's a hundred dollars that um, you don't have to put in your PIN. So I would treat it the same way. Um, another advice would be if you want to um, share your, your your banking details over the over the internet or over the phone, um, you can actually buy a prepaid credit card from the post office. So a prepaid credit card, so it doesn't link to your banking account. So you just buy the card, load the amount that you need. Um, so it'd be 50, 100, and then use that card to pay for whatever you need online or over the telephone. So it acts like a Visa card or a MasterCard. So that's called mm -hmm. a gift. Yeah, so it's like you can you can actually get that from the post office. It's called a prepaid credit card. Mm, that's a good is, idea. Yeah, it doesn't mm. link to your bank. So if if worst case scenario, if your information get um, misused on the internet, you've already lost the amount that you have loaded on the card. And again, mm. the power is back to you. Yes. So, hmm. And I think um, do they do you have ha those sort of handy hints on the scams page at, at Fair Trading? I know there is a special Fair Trading page around scams. Yes, there's information on on scam on our website, um, but Scam Watch would be, um, I guess, I would be my my source of where to go to because we want to capture the holistic picture, so not just what's happening in New South Wales. You know, we want to make sure that all the information that people are putting through, especially um, this is Scam Awareness Week. If you're a bit shy about talking about scam, this is your perfect launching platform let's talk about scam you know it's scam it's scam awareness week did you know that this had happened to me or my auntie um you know so so you got all week to be sharing all your information what you've heard what you've seen and please please come to us um you know with with anything that you have experienced because if we don't know and we we, we won't be able to act prevention is definitely better than cure so that's our challenge to our audience after today is to go and speak to at least five people about this wonderful webinar and all the tips that Finn and Lydia have shared with you. And if you speak to those five people and they talk to five more people, then the message will get out. It's Scam Watch, uh, Scams Awareness Week, and we want you to keep talking about scams. So Absolutely. once again, thank you very much, Finn and Lydia. We really appreciate your time and sharing all your information. And uh, we'll say bye for now and we look forward to welcoming you all to our next uh, live webinar on Legal Aid New South Wales um, platform. So, okay, bye. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.